Hey guys, I dyed my fiber from my June Paradise box with the Country Classics dye and I thought I'd share it with you. The first thing I did was measure out some other types of fibers to try and dye and I did five different fibers. This is Milky Mohair from an old Paradise box. I also did dye the Polworth that came with the June box. I put in some silk lap. You guys have seen me use this before. I've dyed it and put it in bats. I love it. And some Firestar. Last but not least, some locks from the Lester BFL cross fleece that I unboxed recently and just finished washing. So I did come out to a total of eight ounces. And here I'm just putting cold water in my trusty pink soaking bowl. And yes, I am wearing a bathing suit under that towel. I just got out of the pool in case you're like, um, Trish, what? I could not find the instructions in my box. It turned out they were inside the packet of dye, but I had Googled them and found that you should soak for a while with either Synthropol or Dawn dishwashing soap in water for at least 30 minutes. I actually soaked overnight. Um, you've seen me do this before too. I soaked the smaller amounts of fiber in these little solo cups with the same soaking mixture in there and they all <laughs> went in and stayed in overnight. That's the silk lap. That's me overflowing the solo cup. You can see going all over the place. Sorry, it's not in frame. I overflowed it so much I had to add water. That's totally my style, right? Here's the fire star. You can see I was dying with friends yesterday. See all that dye on my poor dishcloth? <laughs> we had a great time though. These are the locks. They're gonna go in the big bowl. And they're going in with the Polworth. I didn't want them all just floating around in one bowl together. I thought it might be kind of hard to like pull them apart without mess making a mess. So that's why they went in separate little cups except for these two, but I figured these two I could get apart pretty easily without getting myself confused. Last but not least, there is the Milky Mohair that is going in the last cup and I finally got smart and put it in first and then put the water in. So these are just going to soak overnight and I dyed them Sunday after we took my mom to brunch, which was wonderful. See you in the morning to dye this stuff. Um, from what I understand, you can do this a few different ways. You can mix up kind of dye to paint or whatever, but I decided to just dye it all in like a kind of a low immersion method. So I'm just kind of arranging it all in a pan so I can dye it over my stove. And you guys, this has really inspired me to get a couple of the lids for these pans so that I don't use plastic wrap anymore. So I'm going to get on Amazon and order them because when I use plastic wrap, I feel so guilty now. Here's the silk lap. This stuff, the dye tends to struggle to kind of penetrate the middle, so I was trying to spread it out more. That's the fire star. Don't ask me why I squeezed it out since I was gonna do an immersion method, but whatever. And then the mohair. Now 
then we're just gonna add enough water from the soap water to barely cover the top of it move it to the stove so this is still the room temperature water that it soaked in and I'm gonna quickly mix up my dye the instructions said to mix it with about a quarter cup of um, boiling water to make a paste and then add more so this is when I discovered there were instructions in here all along just in case you guys are wondering your instructions are in your little brown envelope I am wearing a respirator. It is just good to be safety conscious. So I wipe my spoon off and get ready to pour this stuff. I am using the silicone mitts because I just put boiling water in that glass jar. And in order to avoid spilling it on myself, which I've done a bajillion times, I am pouring away for once. Yay, Trish, you do learn. So I just poured it all over everything and then quickly put on a rubber glove and kind of smushed it all in. Now, I have found when I put my fiber in a pan and then pour the dye on it, a lot of times it doesn't penetrate to the bottom of the fiber. Um, sometimes to avoid this, I'll put some dye in the bottom, but I did not do that this time. It's a long story. I was trying to have all the fiber take the dye at the same time so it's in room temperature water again with the hot dye so I decided to just flip over the fiber to make sure it all got dye on it and I just didn't want to have tons of white I mean the white is fun too but I wanted to make sure I got everything pretty well saturated All right, so I have it like I want it, and I'm gonna go ahead and cover this up, and this is when I just realized that I have got to just buy the stainless covers for these pans so I can stop using plastic wrap for them. I don't know why I haven't thought of it before, but I am gonna do it, and I'm gonna do it this week. So I just set this, uh, both these burners on simmer, and then set my timer. For 30 minutes and went to go knit. The 
leave after 30 minutes on simmer. I am not sure my temperature was up right away or as quickly as it could have been. And I had actually read on the instructions that I downloaded originally that if after 30 minutes that I wasn't exhausted to add just a little bit of vinegar to the bath. So that's what I did. And then I just went ahead and covered it back up and cooked it about 15 more minutes. And I did turn my heat up just a hair. It didn't boil. And that's usually for the best, especially when you have silk in here. But um, I did turn it up just a hair. So you'll see it's really steaming. It has cooked 10 to 15 more minutes. And I was pretty happy with this. So I went ahead and took off the plastic. And I mean, you guys, if you've watched me dye, especially blue before, you know that I have noticed that as I let the fiber cool off, a lot of times blue continues to exhaust. I don't know if it's the pH where I live or if that's just everybody, but um, it, it kept exhausting. So I let it cool and you're gonna see, I mean, there is next to no dye left in this water. There's nothing coming out of that silk. But I'm gonna pour the dye water into the left hand bowl of the sink so that you can see for sure how much dye was really in there. There is not much left. Is it the silk? You can see not much dye left in there. Here is the fire star. This is the mohair. Here are the locks. There was a little bit more dye coming out of these, so I took a little bit extra time rinsing it. And last, here's the Polworth. Again, a little bit more dye was coming out of the Polworth um, than some of the other stuff, and I went ahead and rinsed it a little bit extra. But like I said, it's really next to exhausted. If I hold like a plastic spoon up, you almost can't even tell that there was anything left. So I'm really happy with this dye. I think I would be willing to buy some, and I'm going to have to go look at their colors. I'm a little concerned because I did find a video online that said that the results when you mix them are a bit unpredictable, so I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I don't know, maybe I should buy a bunch and mix them and see. You can see if I was using a spoon to check that, it's just so light, it's next to exhausted. And it turned out really brilliant and pretty.